Lord, our Lord, how excellent, how majestic is your name in all the earth. Father, we thank you this morning for bringing us here, creating us, Father, in your own image. We thank you for your righteousness and your example unto us. And even in this auditorium today, Lord, we must come and ask for your forgiveness because, Father, we do not live up, Lord, to your standards and your righteousness. So we come this morning, Lord, asking that you would forgive us. And then, Father, we also thank you. Thank you for the opportunity to come, and we thank you, Lord, for this Founders Week and for this Founders Occasion. That, Lord, that people had the vision and the forethought to um, bring Anderson University into existence. We thank you for all that they did. We thank you for all that's intended to be. And then, Father, we ask that you would protect Anderson. That, Lord, that we know that the devil is busy going about doing all he can to cause places like Anderson to fail. But, Father, just like you were with the Israelites as they marched through the Red Sea, and that, Father, they marched around a wall that fell down without any armature or without any weapons being fired. We ask that you would protect Anderson. Lord, we ask that you would bless this occasion. And, Father, we ask that whatever we do, whether we eat or whether we drink, we bring you glory in all that we do. We ask all these blessings in the powerful, strong, and majestic name of your son, Jesus. Amen. Good morning. My name is Wayne Blandreth. It is my pleasure to officially welcome you to Anderson University's Founders Day Convocation Service. Today's service marks the 105th anniversary of the university's original charter issued on February the 14th, 1911. In 1929, our fifth president, Dr. Annie Dub Denmark, began the tradition of celebrating Founders Day in order to acknowledge those individuals and organizations that have played a significant part in the founding of Anderson University. In addition to honoring our founders, it is also a special time when we can come together as a family to celebrate our long tradition of academic excellence and service to God. In helping us celebrate today, we have members from our Board of Trust, Board of Regents, Board of Visitors, families and friends of our guest speaker, and alumni. In fact, we have alumni with us today from our Golden Anchor Society. These alums have celebrated their 50th anniversary as graduates of Anderson. Please join me in welcoming all of these special individuals to our campus today. Let me encourage you, as you stroll around the campus today, I hope you will reflect back on the history of Anderson and look to the future with great anticipation as God continues to use this special place to share knowledge for life's journey and inspire a future generation of students to make a significant difference in this world.
Good morning. It's my pleasure to introduce our Founders Day speaker. Michael Batchelor became Chief Executive Officer of Baptist Easley Hospital on March 1, 2013. He joined Baptist Easley from Greenville Health System, where he had served as president of the North Greenville campus since 2005. Prior to that, he was administrator, clinical, non-clinical support services at Greenville Hospital System from 2001 to 2005. Starting his career as a combat field medic in 1988 with the United States Army, he received he served rather several posts in the United in the United States and Germany. He holds a master's degree in healthcare management from Troy State University, a bachelor's degree from the University of Maryland, and an associate's degree from the University of South Carolina. He is a graduate of both Leadership Greenville and Furman University's Riley Institute for Diversity and holds a Green Belt Black Belt Lean Six Sigma certification. He is also a licensed practical nurse. Michael and his wife of 30 years, Cami Bachelor, have four children and a granddaughter. He is also a preacher's kid whose father has been pastoring for 50 years and is the current pastor of Tabernacle Baptist Church in Gaffney, South Carolina. And it's my understanding that his father is here in the audience today, and we welcome you, sir. Let me tell you a little about Baptist Easley Hospital because it is a phenomenal place. For more than 50 years, Baptist Easley Hospital, a 109-bed facility, has provided compassionate care for generations of upstate families. The hospital's goal is to provide not only award-winning medical care, but also a rewarding personal experience. Baptist Easley Hospital is a partnership is in a partnership between Palmetto Health and Greenville Health System, but still operates independently. Baptist Easley recently opened Medical Center Powdersville to help serve the Powdersville community. It is the first hospital ever to achieve the top 10th percentile in patient, physician, and employee satisfaction in the same year, and thus to be awarded the inaugural Press Ganey Partner of Choice Award. Baptist Easley was named a 2012 top hospital by the Leapfrog Group, and most recently, Baptist Hospitals Review selected Becker's Hospital Review, rather, selected Baptist Easley as a top 100 community hospital. I'm also happy to say that Baptist Easley is one of our premier clinical partners for our nursing program, and we're grateful for that partnership. So ladies and gentlemen, it is my pleasure and honor to present to you our 2017, 16 rather, Founders Day speaker, Mr. Michael Batchelor. Wow, you know, to be announced that way, um, I'm always humbled. Dr. Whitaker, Board of Directors, Board of Advisors, trustees, alumni, friends, faculty, staff, thank you. All the students, current and past, I find it a great honor to be with you today. While we all like to be introduced, uh, I actually find introductions very humbling for myself because when I'm recognized, uh, I can't be recognized without other recognition, and I want to do that today. I thank God for saving me. That's the number one thing in my life. I thank God for my parents. I thank God for my wife of 30 years, my children. It's hard to believe that I'm now a grandfather. It's, hard, it's really hard to believe for that. I thank God for great friends like Sam and Angie Kelly, for Wayne, the Landreth family, and Tracy. I thank God for them. I thank God for my daughter. My 10-year-old daughter's here today. My mother-in-law's here today. I've got, got the whole family here with me today. But again, I thank you for that. Thank you for my team back at Baptist Easley. I've got a great team. I've also got a great team here in Anderson and Med. Uh, with John Miller and Bill Manson, that great team here at AnMed. I know they're a great family and friend of you as well. But achieving all that, again, would not be possible. And at a minimum, at best, I'm extremely thankful for God's blessings. And I know Anderson University is as well. Again, like Dr. Whitaker said, I came back home in 2001 after completion of military service 
And as I address you today, I'm reminded again of the impact of the training and education that I have experienced. And when asked to speak to you, I had to again to reflect and pause and pay tribute to those who had a vision, who sacrificed their time, their resources, and for some, their own life, who continued forward with a mission in mind so that I could better myself and further advance in my own personal journey. Also reflected in 2013, I did relocate to Baptist Easley, which is jointly owned by the two largest health systems in the state of South Carolina. And 15 months ago, I was able to move over to a little place called Easley, South Carolina, into Pickens County, in this whole western corridor I call God's country. Over the past few years, I've grown to appreciate the many wonderful institutions in our state, but have grown especially fond of Anderson University. I've even wearing the tie even got the emblem. And I've, I've grown especially fond of your leadership and its desire to serve each of you and others to further advance, number one, the kingdom. That's why we're here. As we pause today to remember the dedication and devotion of the many friends and founders of this great university, I could not help but notice a pattern which is displayed throughout the history pages of Anderson University. While I do not have the time to reflect on the numerous achievements and accomplishments because your president and Mr. Landreth gave me 15 minutes, but the pattern that I saw throughout your history is a pattern of ongoing development, ongoing advancement, growth, expansion, progress, success, day in and day out. This determination or kindred spirit and here's what I heard even more. We will not quit despite adversity. We will press forward despite adversity. This leaning on the everlasting arms despite adversity. To include an ever sense of preservation, to flourish despite the time period in history that I believe is a very difficult time, but to flourish for God's glory. This ongoing transformation can be traced from its origin of higher learning for women. What a great history. What a great history. Don't ever forget that history. At the seminary in 1848, to its closure during the Civil War. What a great history. From the transition from a junior college to a university status, to the beginning of its first doctoral program in 2012, to the inclusion of a strong, collegiate NCAA Division II status, both with your, with your facilities, with your coaches, with its staff and students alike. Anderson University's ongoing contribution both in service to our community, not to include its economic impact to our region, 80 to $100 million a year contributed to this economy. It's quite an ongoing accomplishment, but without the hard work, the hard de the dedication, prayer, and the spirit of Anderson citizens with a desire to press forward despite adversity, to succeed despite adversity. This special place of learning would not exist as it does today, 2016. Today, as you continue to reflect, remember the pages of history will reflect the university's achievements. But I would ask each of you to search your heart at this moment at this time by asking yourself just one question. One question, will I ever be successful? Success is a peace of mind, which is a direct result of self-satisfaction in knowing you did your best, your God-given best to become the best that you are capable of becoming, John Wooden. This morning, I want to spend just a few more moments with you, and while I know the time I have with you is brief, I am prayerful and with great hope that each of you will leave this place reflecting on that question. But you will leave with a greater commitment to live out your life by revealing to the world, to Anderson, South Carolina, to the upstate region of South Carolina, who are you and what you stand for? What do you stand for? because I'm convinced for those who either have paid an ultimate price for the mission of Anderson University to be achieved and to be sustained, 
both past and present, or the current faculty and staff and students alike, each of you have been equipped, or right now you are being equipped like a soldier on the battlefield. A soldier who is equipped for the battlefield is going to be ready in order to achieve success and win the battle. So two points. So now you know definitely I'm a preacher's kid. I'm, going, I'm getting ready to give you some points. Number one, you must be dedicated in your preparation. The Bible's very clear about it. It starts off with a question mark, a question. It says what? It said over in 1 Corinthians chapter 6 and verse 19, it says what? Know you not that your body is the temple of the Holy Ghost, which is in you, which you have of God, and you are not of your own? For you are bought with a price. Therefore glorify God in your body and in your spirit, which are not yours, but God's. Also, the Bible talks about, it says, I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, wholly acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. And that reasonable means duty. It's your duty. It's your duty to be dedicated in your preparation. I love the quote by John Maxwell who says, anytime you make a commitment to something, I promise you it will be tested. You must reveal the fruits of your life. All across America, all across of leadership, every book you read, it talks about this words, it gives buzzwords like transformation, about being authentic. You hear it on the news. What is being authentic? Well, I believe you must reveal these in order to live a life of very, in an authentic manner, such as love. When's the last time you looked over to a colleague and said, I love you? Many times we as leaders will make statements like this. It's not personal, it's business. You ever heard that one? Well, I'm going to tell every one of you, after much reading and much making that statement and being rebuked by many that I respect and who are much wiser than I am, it is personal. Love is personal. So when's the last time you had the gratefulness to say, I love you? Joy. Joy. I always make this statement to my children. Don't allow anyone to steal your joy. Don't be defined by the mistakes we make. It's how we live out that life after we make mistakes. Because I assure you, everyone in this room that's breathing and living will make mistakes. But don't be defined by those mistakes. Learn from them. Peace. The Bible talks about we're to live at peace with all men, if be possible. We want to be at peace. Long-suffering. Gentleness. You ever met someone, you said, that's such a gentle giant? We all have, hadn't we? We want to be like those people, the gentle giants. Goodness. I believe we're here to make a difference, to be good, and to take care of people. Faith. We know the Bible's definition of faith is faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. How strong is your faith? Meekness. Temperance. I love this quote by Walt Emerson. What lies behind us and what lies before us are basically tiny matters compared to what lies within us. Allow what's in us to be expressed on the outward. As we reflect on this great history of this, organ of this institution, let it out. It's great to have a smile. I always love it when I see my children smile, because many times their father is not smiling, and it brings a smile to my face. Number three, you must be responsible. Responsible to God first, and responsible to each other. We're all responsible beings. You must be courageous. It's a difficult time in our country as Christians, I believe, to be courageous. But I challenge you to be courageous. Because the Bible gives us a great verse on this. It says, Fear thou not, for I am with thee. The Bible also says in Isaiah chapter 26 and verse 3, it says, Thou wilt keep him in perfect peace, whose mind is stayed on thee. The Bible says, I will strengthen thee, yea, I will help thee. Yea, I will uphold thee with the right hand of my righteousness. Over the last year, I've had the opportunity to meet some wonderful young people from Anderson University. Now, I won't embarrass this one. I promised her I would, would not. But when I think about this young lady, I think about that's how I want my daughter to be when she's a freshman or sophomore in college. And you, you're right here with her every day. 
She's someone that breathes not only Anderson University and your mission, she's a great reflection of your history, but she's also a great reflection of our God. You must be sincere in your service. You must be truthful and committed in your actions. The greatest gap in life is the one between knowing and doing. What a great gap. Be steadfast in your efforts. Be disciplined. It's very difficult to be disciplined. It's very difficult to be in a university status today as a student and be disciplined, especially if you're a student as well as a student athlete. What I do in the future depends on what I already am, and what I am is the result of previous years of discipline. So remain disciplined. Allow feebleness to turn to triumph. You know, when we're at our weakest point is when, is when God is, a, is at our greatest strength. That's when he can strengthen us. Allow your faults shift into talents by setting your affection on things above and not on things of this earth. I love John Wesley who made a statement who said, earn all you can. I believe in earning a good income. Work hard. Save all you can. But I love the last part of what he says. And Sam Kelly, who's one of my friends here today, he'll always sign off with his signature block, and here's what he'll say. Much is given, much is required. Much more is given, much more is required. So guess what? Give all you can. The ever-coming, victorious, abundant life is of utmost importance to me, and I believe it is to Anderson University, especially during our challenging days. It is going to take genuine, authentic, transparent men and women who are willing to stand out more than ever before. And I am confident that each of you can and will stand. You have the ability and the power to change our world based on your willingness to do so. Your willingness, your willingness, your willingness. Looking backward, but yet looking forward, <clears throat> excuse me. As we look backward, we are the sum total of all the decisions and actions we have made this past year in the past century. Therefore, we need to, one, recall our positive achievements, lay to rest the negatives without guilt, move forward with the insights we have gained. As we look forward, I offer you these inspirational words words which I kind of copied from John Maxwell in his book, Intentional Living. He says, be willing to give up at any moment all that we are in order to receive all that we can become. Sense the invisible so we can do the impossible. Trust God. Trust his resources since the dream is bigger than all our abilities and acquaintances. Continue when discouraged. I've never lived in a day or worked in a day that people are more discouraged. A, feel, a sense of no hope. Everyone in this room, if you are a member of this institution in one way or fashion, you're part of an institution who believes in the blessed hope. Continue when discouraged for where there is no faith in the future, there is no power in the present. Attract winners because big dreams draw committed people. See us and our people in the future. Our dream is the promise of what we shall be one day. History tells us that in every age there comes a time when leaders, when people, when God's people must come forth to meet the needs of the hour. Such a time as this, both in education and in our country. Again, you have the ability to change the world. We have the ability. It's one person at a time. But I'm reminded of this. But none of these things move me. None of these things move me. Neither count I my life dear unto myself, so that I may finish my course with joy and the ministry, which I have received of the Lord Jesus, to testify the gospel and the grace of God. Be joyful. Be joyful in hope, patient in affliction, faithful and fervent in prayer. God bless you. Thank you for letting me be a part of this great day and this great history of this organization. Thank you, and God bless you.
Let us pray. Father, thank you for the privilege of celebrating both the history and the future of Anderson University. As we look to our left and to our right, we not only see students, alumni, and faculty, we see a family. The community that has blossomed, the dedication of the coaches and professors, the physical, intellectual, and spiritual growth of this campus, all are incredible accomplishments. But Lord, we fully recognize that none of this is of our own accord. All credit we owe to you, God. As we strive to educate and equip students to be deep thinkers and hard workers, Father, we promise to put you first, to give you all the glory. Thank you, Father, for calling each alumnus and student here and for the immense blessing of our devoted faculty and staff. Lord, guide these leaders and give them an insatiable hunger to know you deeper. Thank you for bringing President and Mrs. Whitaker into our lives as they exemplify servant leadership for us. I pray that you bless them for their devotion both to Anderson University and to you, Father. I pray that you help us strive for unity, but God, I also pray that you push us past our comfort zones. Give us opportunities and the boldness to act on them so that we might further your kingdom here on earth. I pray for a spiritual awakening of this country and of our world. May it start in the hearts of each of us. Lord, make us a city on a hill. Father, we also look to the bright future of Anderson University, and we humbly ask that you would continue to guide us as we seek to grow closer to you as one body. Give us eyes to see and ears to hear what you desire for each of our lives and the life of this community. Lord, thank you for generous financial blessings upon this school. And finally, Father, I pray that as we go forth today, we realize that as Anderson University's ambassadors of Christ, we can have an eternal effect right here in Anderson, South Carolina, and throughout the world. Grant in each of us the same courage and vision that you did in our founding leaders. In your precious and holy name we pray. Amen. <laughs>